man that was a fun game y'all and those first two seconds of this video would be your pov if you were one of the refs for this game because they were completely blind but <laughs> that's all i'm gonna say about the officiating though i'm not one of those people that likes to harp on that be just because i feel like it's very tiresome although today was more obvious than ever because since when is doing this a technical foul we know spo likes to be emotional man they ain't got to penalize my guy for that but anyways welcome back y'all as the heat lost one of the most exciting games of the season to the milwaukee bucks it's nice to see all this my first video in a week because i was back home in broward for the holidays so i hope everyone had a great or i guess not for the holidays just for thanksgiving but i hope everyone had a great thanksgiving a lot happened in the last week i mean the heat blew a giant lead to the knicks which had me frustrated and then they they lost another game to the nets without anyone uh you had nikola jovic sound off in serbian and it turns out everything was translated the wrong way so i'm glad we ain't talk about none of that because it's a new week uh with a really really fun game to talk about and i want to start off by saying that uh my guy brendan he said he would be watching tonight's video specifically and he was going to be the first to comment and I'd love if y'all would make my guy Brandon the liar. So make sure y'all comment down below your thoughts on the game, your thought on your, your thoughts on the heat, how you feeling? Uh, because I want there to be a hundred comments by the time Brandon hops on, because it really helps the algorithm too. So feel free to like and subscribe uh, if you feel like it, because I can't tell you what to do. Uh, but let's talk about Bam Adebayo to start with. We are watching a superstar be born before our eyes. The best way that I can describe his game is dominant. Now, the way there's a, a few plays I want to highlight today. Usually, I show the highlights when uh, when I talk about these videos or when I talk during these videos. But I had like a, a NFL one get copyrighted last week, and tonight's game was TNT, so I don't want to mess with worried about getting copyrighted and all that stuff. So I'm just gonna visualize for you and use my use my vivid vocabulary. You feel me? Bam at a bio had one play in like the third quarter got the ball at the top of the key and started sprinting down the middle of the lane put one bump into brooke lopez chest two-hand dunk on his head a few minutes later got the i think he got a rebound sprinted down the court pulled up right 12 to 15 feet from the hoop nothing but net from the mid-range shot there was so many plays with just that non-hesitation aggressiveness from bam and the bow which is not something that we saw last year it's very clear to a lot of Heat fans that last year, Bam Adel took uh, Bam Adel took a major leap from the previous season. But this season, it is another clear and defined step. Because yes, he had the mid-range jump shot last season, and it looks even better this season. But I don't see any hesitation, any aggressiveness. You're not screaming at Bam late in game saying, hey, get Bam the ball so he can do the same or get the same looks he was getting earlier in the game. Today in the fourth quarter, it was give Bam the ball again and again and again and let him go to work. And it felt like 90% of the time he was putting it in the hoop. Now, his official percentages tonight is 13 to 27, so 48%. But look at the 40, or not the 48%, look at the 27 field goal attempts. That's something that I absolutely love to see and did have seven free throw attempts. So, I mean, ideally, you'd like to see that get up a little bit, but we all know the thing about the officiating and all that stuff. But he was awesome, super fun to watch, not to mention he had another 10 rebounds and uh, he threw a five on assist on top of that just for good measure. But he, as a Heat fan, has me so extremely excited. He is the main reason that I'm currently tuning into games. Well, I mean, I'd be watching regardless, of course. I'm not like one of those Heat fans that for some reason they get frustrated. Oh, I'm not watching the game. Like, if you're not with us when we bad, don't be with us when we good. Uh, even though the Heat aren't bad now. I know they lost, what's that, three straight now? But we all get, <laughs> they're a good team. I was watching this team when they was rolling out Luke Babbitt and Willie Reed, all right? And Akaro White, shout out 13 Carl. So it's nice when you actually have a competent team, even though they are losing 3-0. Uh, and then I, I feel like I've been very positive for a loss. A lot of times I'm not like that. Uh, but shout out to the guy in the comments on the last video who said I'm not a real Heat fan because I'm always negative and always hate. The real fans of this channel know that I'm I'm realistic. At least that's kind of my goal with this channel. There's a lot of Heat channels and networks out there that are always positive sunshine pumpers and ones that always hate and like to criticize everything they do. I like to feel like I'm a good in between. And truthfully, I just say how I feel. I really don't have any agendas to push, uh, at least not over here on the Basement Sports Network. We'd be having some fun over there. So check them out for a live stream post game reactions. I'd be doing, uh, you know, every other game over there, every few games over there. Uh, I want to look through uh, my notes here, see what else we want to discuss about the game. So, of course, big matchup tonight. Damian Lillard returning to the Miami Heat or 
I guess not returning, but playing in Miami since the whole saga in the offseason. Truthfully, I didn't feel anything because it's not like I really wanted Dame in the offseason. Like, I, I didn't really care about that whole situation, uh, which is a complete lie. Because if you go back on my channel from, what's that? I don't know, September, July, whatever. Uh, I had like 30 straight videos in the span of like 20 days all talking about Damian Lillard. It's very clear I wanted him, but fortunately he'd have gotten off to a hot start. Uh, so I can, you know, kind of not care as much about that, but he was really, really good tonight. And the thing that makes the Bucks so scary now is, I mean, Giannis didn't score the whole fourth quarter until that meaningless dunk at the end. Uh, and I guess he, he hit a couple of free throws. He gets put in prison in the end of games. One, because Bam Adebayo is, is an incredible defender. He's putting that boy on lockdown. But two, because he can't shoot the ball. He's very easy to defend come the nit, uh, nit and gritty in the, in the fourth, or whatever the word is, in the fourth quarter. It was Chris Middleton and Damian Lillard, Lillard. Those were your closers tonight. Now, of course, that they have Dame, a luxury that they did not have last year, that does make this Bucks team very scary. But uh, I like our chances. Of course, he had no Jimmy Butler tonight. We got that news earlier in the day, which made this game kind of more exciting to me because y'all remember the game a couple years ago when Caleb Martin and Max Struess combined for like 60 and they beat Milwaukee in Miami while being shorthanded. Uh, but the Heat don't have Damian Lillard. But the guy that they did keep because of that was Kame Hame Hakez Jr. That dude is awesome, man. And I love the broadcast tonight. Usually national media sucks. But we had our guy Kevin Harlan tonight. Reggie Miller is Reggie Miller. But Shaq, I thought, was, was decent as well. Uh, Bahame Hawkins tonight, 14 points, 6 assists, 4 rebounds. He shot 7 to 9, so the efficiency was incredible because it certainly felt like he scored a lot more than 14 points. But the thing I love about him is he was doing it from everywhere. Pump fakes, spins, doing the footwork, staying aggressive. And all of that for a rookie who's shooting like 40 plus percent from three, who that's really not his game anyways, he is special. People were saying he didn't get uh, drafted that high in the draft because his ceiling uh, was maybe like, uh, you know, decent starter. He looks like a guy that can be an all-star in this league. He truly, truly does. I know out of all the rookies, not counting, not counting Chet Holmer, I guess. So out of everyone in the 2023 draft class, he is rated number two overall in terms of offensive rating and you know defense rating, overall rating behind Victor Weminyama. And for a guy that was drafted 19th, I would say that's pretty damn good. And he's another reason that he fans should be super, super excited. I mean, if you want to look as a whole, I guess almost 20 games into the season, it almost looks like not getting Damian Lillard really wasn't all that bad because you kept Tyler Hero, who was having a career year prior to the injury. Now, I don't want to just say excluding the injury because that's a big deal. With Tyler Hero, he can't stay healthy. He has proven that he has proven to be a guy that is not there a lot of times when you need him. Goes down for a couple weeks at a time every year. So, and he's young. I know Dame has his injury concerns as well, but Tyler Hero is the younger player. But regardless, he's played well. Kyle Lowry, shout out to him. He's been okay this season. Had a pretty great game tonight as well. Uh, I think he was great against the Knicks game as well that, that they lost. <laughs> Maybe there's a little bit of a trend there. I, I'm just kidding. I, I'm not going to meaninglessly hate on Kyle Lowry because I do think he's been fine. Now, of course, you do have Nikola Jovic, who has done nothing. He's been a big topic of conversation over the last week because a lot of people, including himself, feel like Spolster is not using him right. They're using him as more of a five. I don't think that's the issue here because even when uh, Jovic did get some run versus the Nets, he was playing kind of the guard. He was getting the rebound, pushing pace, running the ball, bringing the ball down the court. So I feel like they are using him a little bit as a guard. I just feel like the playing time is not there because he's not really great at defense. And he's a tall, skinny 19-year-old. It's expected. The minutes will come for him. I just don't think it'll be, or he's 20, by the way. Uh, they just, they won't be this season. Maybe he'll get some more run next year and then maybe have an actual rotation spot carved out after that. Now, you have a Jimmy window now. You want to win now. You can't wait for Jovic to develop. So whether he should still be on this team or trade it for someone else, you know, that's a completely different conversation. But... That concludes the Nikola Jovic talk. But most importantly, by not getting Damian Lillard, you're keeping Jaime Jaquez. And like we just were talking about for the last several minutes, he's awesome. And he projects to be an amazing Heat player. You also had Josh Richardson with some really great defense tonight. Put on a, a, a great scoring show with 20 points and 7 assists. He came to play today. Uh, Kevin Love, 6 points, 10 rebounds, 2 for 11. His shot sucks this year. I think he'd play a lot more if he could just shoot. Unfortunately, he can't. But like I've said about Kevin Love all year, just come playoff time, if he can find the shot, then he'll be better. Uh, it was nice to see Duncan Robinson come back from the finger injury. Wasn't incredible, but not too bad. 13 points. Uh, and he uh, 
hit some shots late, <laughs> I guess. Uh, I was scared, though, because last year he had the thumb injury as well. And after that is when he tailed off. He was terrible. So I was scared we might see something similar. But he missed a lot more time last year. This time was only two games. So hopefully everything with him was uh, okay. Uh, and then the only other guys that kind of got relevant minutes that we haven't discussed is Caleb Martin. Looks like he's getting back into form at a great spin move uh, on Chris Middleton today. That got me pretty hyped. Uh, and then Jamal Kane hit like a big three early on, but he only played 11 minutes. So it is nice to see him get some run because he looks like a guy that could be a, a pretty decent player as well. Uh, I think that's really all I got to say about the Heat side of things. Uh, we talked a little about Giannis. We talked about Dame. Uh, in the fourth quarter, Spolster ran with the smaller lineup. He didn't have Kevin Love out there. That kind of came to bite them in the ass. It was a couple big offensive rebounds by Milwaukee. So I didn't agree with that when it happened because we knew that the Bucks would eat on the glass. And what good is getting stops if you can't get the rebound? But at the same time, there's only so much Spo can do. I get why he didn't want to play Love. He wasn't great. But you do know uh, when you do play this team, if when you do play this team in the playoffs, you will have Jimmy, you will have Hayward Highsmith, who I think will be critical in this series because he is a lengthy guy that you can put on Dame or Middleton. Uh, so guys like that will make a difference. So like I said, I'm not super concerned with the rotations or, or the fact that the Heat even lost this game. Uh, that's really all I got to say about the actual game, though. It was a fun one trading baskets back and forth after the Heat initially fell down double digits early uh, and fought all their way back, led by Jaime Jaquez. Uh, uh, but the last thing I want to talk about is that stupid in-season tournament that they couldn't stop pushing tonight. Nobody cares. They had the stupid-ass scores on the top of the screen the whole time. And I promise you, NBA, nobody cares. Stop trying to push it. The stupid point differential thing is just stupid. That's exactly what it is. And get the damn scores off my screen because I'm tired of looking at it. And nobody cares. Uh, I think that's all I got to say for this video. The only note I didn't get to is Giannis crossing Giannis. Or Duncan crossing Giannis, taking Dame off the dribble. Duncan has me excited. Uh, another thing is a Heat fan that has me very excited. That's all I got, though. Overall, relatively encouraging win just because you almost beat the Bucks without Jimmy. So that's a positive thing if you believe in moral victories. I, I don't. <laughs> but I just think everything we've seen from this Heat team over the first 18 games uh, gives you some stuff to be happy about. The next game is Thursday versus the Indiana Pacers. That game, uh, if the Heat don't score 130 points that game, there's a problem. Because the Pacers are giving up 150 points to everyone. So that's just something I hope to see because the Heat have been struggling uh, scoring prior to this game. But that's all I got for this video. So make sure to leave y'all comments down below. How you feeling about the, the Heat right now? How y'all feeling about uh, Duncan Robinson and Bam Adebayo and Kamehameha Hakez Jr.? And most importantly, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, help me get to... 3,500 subs. I don't know the next milestone. Uh, but I do appreciate all the support and obviously the like and the comment. It helps the algorithm push this out to everyone. Which is greatly appreciated. So I'll see y'all next time. Peace out. Look, pull up in the city, trying to get that dead fast. Right. Do it on my own, I don't need no dead weight. Right. Had to kill them off, yeah, I need a headspace. You know this homegrown bitch don't offend me. Hmm.